We begin tonight with the motion filed by the federal government seeking the revocation of bail granted the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Nambi Kanu. The motion is asking the courts to issue an arrest warrant on Mr. Kanu and detain him pending the determination of the charges against him. The federal government is accusing the IPUB leader of flouting his bail conditions, which prohibits him from being seen in a crowd exceeding 10 people. He is not expected to grant any interviews, hold or attend any rallies. He is also expected to provide the court updates of his health status every month. The federal government is accusing Mr. Kano of inaugurating the Biafra Security Service, an action considered a grave threat to national security and unity of the country. He's facing trial before a federal high court in Abuja for alleged treason. He was granted bail in April on health grounds, but his co-accused were not granted bail. Now, the demand for the arrest of the IPOB leader by the federal government and the suspension of the quit notice by the Arawa youths is perceived as a fallout of President Muhammadu Buhari's state broadcast on Monday, where he reiterated that the unity of the country is not negotiable. There are, however, indications that in the weeks to come, the federal government might be taking more tough decisions, especially after the meeting with service chiefs to maintain the country's unity. Nigerians' unity is settled and not negotiable. President Mohamedou Buhari's pronouncement may appear frail, but it's weighty and presidential in all its ramifications. We shall not allow irresponsible elements to start trouble, and when things get bad, they run away and settle others with the responsibility of bringing back order. The broadcast is already making many positives and generating ripples, not only from those affected directly or indirectly, but from persons who sat on the fence waiting and watching to see how it would play out. Uh, it goes uh, to reconfirm that the president is in charge. When he assured us that anybody, even any part of this country, is safe, is free to live where you want to live. Three days after the broadcast and the signal sent, the indigenous people of Biafra was the first group to come public in what seemed like a reaction to the broadcast. The group withdrew its earlier threats to stop the conduct of the Anambra elections and clarified its objectives, claiming to be a non-violent group, but one that is committed to the welfare of the Igbo people. We will never, ever, ever resort to armed violence or armed violence. And then on Thursday, a group of northern youths that issued an eviction notice to Igbos living in the north suspended the threats, and they are now singing a new song. But some persons are not sure about the sincerity of the suspension order. The quit notice in the first place was improper. And how do you define a northern now? I was born in the north. I grew up in the north. I went to school in the north. And uh, all my life I lived in the north before I went to England. And then from there I came back after the war, only to find that I don't belong to the north anymore. So the question about Nigeria is this, that we have got this type of division into ethnic groupings. There are the white boys, you know, who gave this. And we're just acting out a script that, they have, that has been transmitted for, to them from generation. So I don't think either that the question has turned that there is when a reversal is correct. It's just merely a suspension. One statement that continues to resonate from everyone is Nigeria's unity. Indeed, the president may have sent a strong signal. It's also a wake-up call to right the wrongs already created by these groups, or they face the consequences as long as the country's unity is not compromised. To keep Nigeria one is a task that must be done. Muhammadu Buhari, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has made it clear the unity of Nigeria is settled, it's not negotiable. And the country's unity is what they all want to talk about. But some other groups, predominantly from the South, would rather ask for restructuring of the country's democracy. And now that the federal government has ordered the rearrest of the IPOP leader, Namdi Kanu, the story might just change or another chapter reopen. 
whichever way the pendulum swings, what the common man on the street is expecting from the country's leaders is true leadership, improved economy, better security and good livelihood as against political and personal interests.